What have you done to her? Her career? <laughs> what have you done to her marriage? <laughs> Say in the name of Jesus Christ! Her marriage, that is true. What have you done? Her marriage. What have you done to her marriage? Mm, I took it. You did what? I took it. You took it. Why? Fear. Why? Why did you choose to take her marriage? Fear. How long have you been living in her? How long? Forever. What are the evil you've done to her? Speak louder, you wicked demon. What are the evil you've done to her? I can't. I can't. What are the evil you've done to her? You say you stole her marriage. Uh -huh. What else? Love. What have you done to our family? I took her family. Huh? I took her faith. I took her faith. Come on. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no place in our body. Now, out. The mighty of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Share with us how your life was before you came to the conference with Apostle John Chi. Um, void of love. Um, as a child, I was kind of abandoned and left by my mother and everybody else. So um, I couldn't receive love for anybody. I had a spirit of rejection, and it was horrible. And I didn't believe anybody loved me. I didn't believe anybody could love me, and I wasn't worth loving. And I was numb. People would tell me, my husband, as you've seen, that it, it, it destroys my marriage because he tells me lo he loves me, and I look at him and say, I don't believe you. I don't feel it. I don't believe you. And I've told him that for 19 years, and he's still there. <laughs> and he just never gave up. God gave him the strength not to give up on me. And I didn't go to that conference thinking I'd be delivered, but I was. I thought, oh, I'm going to go with my family, and I'm good. <laughs> so um, I just couldn't feel love. I mean, I cried out to God one time and said, I'm just going to kill myself because I can't, I'm a Christian, and I don't feel your love like people do. I see these people, and they love you, and they feel your love, and I don't. So I'm a fraud, or I'm something, and I just was planning to kill myself and how to do it and have my kids not come home. And I got a text from my sister, who I don't talk to very much because I keep everybody at a distance, and she said, God told me to tell you to hold on, and he's making a way for you just to hold on and not do it because he loves you. And I didn't that day. She doesn't even know this. And I mean, that day I was going to do it because I just felt numb and I, I, didn't, I didn't feel love from God. I knew that the word said that he loved me and I knew that was true, but I never felt it like everybody else. So there was like a barrier in between yeah. you and the truth. Yeah. Just numb. Just, I just... Well, most of that, I, I didn't talk. That groaning was just agony of something else. I couldn't talk. I tried to. <laughs> Nothing would come out of my mouth. But after I was delivered, I fell on the ground, and my whole body was hot. My arm just ached, but it just, I screamed because something, but I didn't know. I went home that Friday night and go, my gosh, I know I'm delivered and I feel so good and I have all this emotion, but I don't know what I was delivered on because I didn't get a clue, a name or nothing. And that Monday, God just poured through the Spirit, just this love. I laughed 
and giggled and cried all day long. I couldn't even stop. My kids were like, what is wrong with you? And I'd be in the car just laughing, crying, and I couldn't stop. It was uncontrollable. And I thought, I can feel love again. <laughs> so since that conference, you haven't had that barrier between you and the love that um, other people give you and the love that God gives you. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. And people tell me they love me. Like my daughter-in-law wrote me a text and I cried. <laughs> I thought, this is the day I can feel love because I never felt it. I didn't believe in it. I just went through the motions and I, I'm ecstatic. It's a little odd because I cry a lot more <laughs> because it's just so overwhelming. But to live all your life not believing in love and not feeling it and just being numb is horrible. Wow, it's so awesome what God does for us. So Donna, what can you advise somebody else that may be going through this? When we were talking before the service, you kind of shared, maybe my testimony is not very big, but you know, we maybe look at people that are crippled and are laying on a bed and we're like, oh, you know, God heals them from getting up and we're like, wow, that's a big testimony. But you know, this is a huge testimony what God in her life, because in the emotional, in the inner, in her inner soul, she was being tormented and she was paralyzed to the point that she wanted to kill herself. And that could be even worse uh, torment than physically. And God delivered from that. So God did a wonderful, miraculous work in her life. So if somebody else here or maybe watching us online is struggling with a similar oppression, what would you suggest to them? Just not to give up that God loves you and to read the word and just not give up. He never, he's not going to leave you. He's never. And he's proven that he won't leave you. He loves you. And just keep praying and <laughs> yeah thank you so much donna thank you so much